Hey everybody, it's Keegan here. I'm back with another video for you guys. And today's video, I'm bringing you guys, I'm bringing you guys another edition of Keegan's movie reviews. And today we're going to be talking about two films this time. And both of these films I watched over the past weekend. One of them I watched on Netflix, and the other I saw in theaters. So let's not waste any more time and uh, let's talk about them. So the first film we're going to be talking about is the new David Fincher film, The Killer, which this is also a Netflix original film. It's based on the series of graphic novels by Alexis Nolent, and this film was directed by David Fincher and was originally released on November 10th, 2023, so this film literally came out about a week ago. And uh, this is a film I've been looking forward to for quite a while since the trailer dropped. And I finally watched it on the day it came out to Netflix, and it was good, but I don't know, I had mixed feelings about it for some reason but we'll get to more on that in a little bit so let's take a dive into the killer so the killer follows an unnamed assassin known as the killer played by michael fassbender who is going who's uh on the run from his employers after one of his latest assignment goes wrong and it's a near miss resulting in his employers going after him so he's traveling across the world finding the people connected to his employers and basically picking them off one by one and he's also battling himself as it seems he's slowly losing his mind as a man with no morals and no uh no compassion and basically just a psychopath basically and um without giving away uh, too much that's basically how i can describe the story of the film in a nutshell now, as I mentioned before, I liked the movie, but I have some mixed thoughts on it. Like, for example, Michael Fassbender was a really good choice for casting the lead role. I thought he did a phenomenal job in this movie. I love the visuals and cinematography, and the pacing is good, too. And the soundtrack is pretty good, too, despite mostly only being songs by the smiths which that's no big deal i enjoy the smiths too and um the cinematography was good too as well however i find the the third act being kind of lackluster like towards the end like the movie started out strong but as the film makes its way to the third act like towards the end it it kind of uh kind of starts to go downhill a little bit it's just okay i guess but don't get me wrong it's not a bad movie or anything however it's not david fincher's best film and not my favorite from fincher either but that's not to say that this is a bad movie or anything but there are some stuff i like about it too but i don't know it's nowhere near as good as some of his other movies but it wasn't it wasn't too bad at least you can say it was better than his previous film, Mank, which I talked about three years ago, which that movie wasn't bad either, but I don't really remember anything about that movie either, but that one was okay too, I guess. But I don't really have a whole lot to say about uh, The Killer. It wasn't a bad movie. It was pretty solid for the most part, despite some criticisms I have with this film specifically how the uh the third act kind of drags on and kind of dips the fil film a little bit but it's not to say that the film was bad by any means but it's not my favorite film from fincher or not and also not his best film either but but then again it, it's not a bad film though i wouldn't call it a disappointment i wasn't really sure what to expect from this one but hey it was entertaining too i guess but if you like some of David Fincher's other films, then I think you might like this one. But I don't have anything else to add, so I am guess I'm going to give The Killer a 6.7 out of 10. And the last film we're going to be talking about in this video is a film that I watched in theaters at one of my local theaters last weekend. And this is a film I've never heard about until recently. And that is the 1993 film, Pharaoh My Concubine, directed by Cage Chen and was originally released on October 15th, 1993. And when I saw this film in the theater, it was the 4K re-release, which looked really, really good and was completely uncut. 
Because I believe when this movie first came out in North America, it was 20 minutes shorter from its um, 171 minute runtime for whatever reason. But when I saw it, it was the uncut version. And this is actually a movie I never actually heard of about until recently via the theater I went to's uh, website. And it seemed like an interesting film. So I went ahead and checked it out. Now, I went into this movie blindedly. Like, I didn't know too much about this movie. But when I came out of the theater, I was completely mesmerized by this movie. But we'll get to more on that in a, in a minute. But for right now, let's take a dive into the storyline of the film and then we'll get into my thoughts on it. So let's take a dive into my into Farewell, My Concubine. Now, Farewell, My Concubine takes place over the course of 70 years. It begins in 1924 and it ends sometime in the 1990s. And it follows two boys who became best friends from a Beijing opera school. And they grow up to being a stage brothers doing their performances together as a kind of a group or something for their performances at operas in China. And um, it even tells the story of the woman who comes into their life and one of the, and marries one of the boys as when they grow up to being men. And the film follows their life during the different changes in political history in the country of China like during those times from the tw 1920s to the 1990s and it even ex goes into all the trouble in between I don't really want to give away too much of the of the story but that's basically what the story is about in a nutshell as I said before, I only heard about this film recently, so I didn't know too much about it when I was going to go see it. I went into the movie pretty blindly, and I came out mesmerized. Like, holy shit, this movie was amazing. Like, I wasn't sure what to expect of this movie, but it was actually really surprising. Like, the film was really, really well made. Like, the acting was really good. The... The set designs and the visuals were really good, and the uh, the music was just amazing too. And uh, I loved every minute of it. It was a really, really great film that actually surprised me. And the overall experience was just amazing seeing it in a theater. Now this is a pretty long movie. It's 171 minutes long, so it's nearly three hours long, but it is well worth the watch. Now, like I mentioned before. Um, for when this movie came out back in 1993, Miramax cut down the runtime to 20 minutes shorter for, for reasons that I don't know why they did it back then, but whatever. But the version I saw was the full length version of the movie without any cuts. I don't know why they would cut it back then, but oh well. But I overall really, really enjoyed the film. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this movie. I would definitely watch it again. And it was just an amazing film that I highly recommend if you haven't seen. And it's one I definitely will check out again one day. Hell, maybe I'll talk about it again in the future. We'll see. But overall, my Farewell My Concubine was an amazing film. And uh, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Anyways, I'm giving Farewell well, My Concubine a 9.1 out of 10. Well, guys, that wraps up another edition of Keegan's Movie Reviews. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, as always, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more videos like this. And turn on notifications, share a video with your friends, yada, 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 you get the rest. And, uh, yeah, guys, so uh, stay tuned for more videos. But anyways, until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye-bye.